History suggests there are four true threats to shareholders. War, hyperinflation, revolution and the bursting of major investment bubbles. The first three can wipe out portfolios altogether. This happened after the communist takeovers in Russia in 1917 or China in 1949. Or it can leave them worth less in real terms almost a century later, as happened after the defeat of the Austro-Hungarian Empire in the First World War. When risks are examined this way, small rises in interest rates assume the importance they probably should have, that is, much less than the attention they're getting at the moment. But this isn't to say that interest rates don't matter. It's no coincidence that very high short-term interest rates tend to coincide with very low valuations for equities, notably in 1921, where this uh, short rate here is for commercial paper, uh, because that's the data we have back there, uh, or in the early 1980s, where this is the short rate um, on, uh, uh, set by the Fed, which obviously uh, coincided at the time with very, very low valuations for shares. Now, both of those, of course, were wonderful buying opportunities for shareholders. If you could earn excellent above inflation returns in a bank account, people might think, why bother with the risk of equities? But what's true when rates are at extreme highs isn't necessarily true of small rises in rates of the sort that the Federal Reserve might carry out later today, particularly when they come from such an extreme low that they've been stuck at for the past six years. Now, shareholders can prosper as interest rates rise, as they did with the occasional brief interruption for two decades after the Second World War. What really matters is the causation of those rising rates. When the economy is growing, the demand for money tends to rise as optimistic companies and individuals borrow to invest or consume, and central banks respond by raising rates. The same economic growth is good for profits and shares as well, and tends to boost valuations too, so giving equities an extra leg up. It's when rates are pushed up far faster than the economy demands in order to bring inflation under control that equities suffer, as central bank engineered recessions hurt profits. Now these moments are rare, but they do create fabulous moments to buy shares. The rest of the time, investors should look at valuations and diversify, while recognising that only the super-rich can afford the private islands and Swiss vaults full of gold, which might offer some insurance against wars and government confiscation. When it comes to the US, valuations are pretty high at the moment. The uh, blue line on here shows Robert Schiller's uh, cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio, which looks back at a decade's profits. You can see at the moment it's pretty high at about 24, although it is down quite sharply in the past uh, uh, past month. Now, it's lower than it was back before the financial crisis hit in 2007, uh, and of course far, far lower than the all-time high in the dot-com bubble, but compared with most of the past 140-odd uh, years, it's still pretty high. In fact, it's in the ninth, ninth decile, that is, when ranked from the cheapest tenth of the time to the most expensive tenth of the time, it's currently in this band here. Now that might sound pretty bad, and in some ways it is. The return over ten years at similar valuations from here over the past century averaged just 1.6% above inflation, with a median return even lower. The average return is shown by the blob in the middle here. Now for investors who hope for returns from shares more in line with a long-term US experience of 7% or so, this looks really terrible. And it's truly awful when compared to the returns that stocks managed to deliver when they were cheap according to the Schiller PE. You can see over in the cheapest decile here, the average there is uh, uh, in double digits and brief in, in some periods was above 15% a year for 10 years above inflation. That, of course, was after interest rates had been extremely high and began to come down again. But then, much of investment depends on what one has and as an alternative. 1.6 may not be very good for shares, but inflation-linked US Treasury bonds offer just 70 basis points above inflation for 10 years, which is even worse. The bond return, though, is at least guaranteed. Shares might have averaged positive real returns from these valuations over uh, the past, well, the data we have going back to 1881, 
but the range is very big. This shows the one standard deviation range, and it goes from uh, minus 2% a year for a decade to plus 5.2% a year for a decade. With uncertainties on this scale, it's easy to see why investors spend so much time concentrating on things they can see clearly and measure, like the cost of money ignoring inflation, even if it doesn't matter quite as much as they think.